Hello everyone, I'm Triple J and welcome to Brain Food at the Movies, where tonight I fire up Netflix and look at another superhero movie that came out just last year, The Wolverine, starring Hugh Jackman, which has been all the X-Men movies so far if you really want to be critical of them. I've seen this once before, but for a proper review, I need to watch this again. At least I know there will be a better viewing enjoyment with this movie than with The Amazing Spider Emo. Back in a few. Well, everyone, I've just finished watching The Wolverine off of Netflix, and I have to say I did have a better time with this than The Amazing Spider Emo. Uh, I'm going to try to subdivide this into a couple different good things and a couple different bad things. The good thing is, of course, we actually have a really good cast of actors here. I'm not just talking about Hugh Jackman, who is always good as Wolverine. I'm talking about the other characters here as well. For example, we have Mariko, played by Tao Okamoto. Uh, she has a really good relationship with uh, Yukio, played by, played by Rila Fukushima. Uh, I just found that they were very lively. They had good chemistry together. You know, good screen presence, too. And, of course, we also had, uh, see here, Harada, who's actually paid by, I believe, a Korean actor named Wee, uh, Will Yun Lee. Pardon my pronunciation. Uh, I thought the action in it was also really good. We had some fantastic set pieces, such as the final fight in the castle, the fight on top of the 300 mile per hour bullet train in Tokyo. Uh, and, well, I thought there was actually some pretty good humor. You know, for a Wolverine is getting, you know, with, with the electronic wands, the technical metal, and they're all going off crazy, of course, at the at the Yashida home, and it was hip replacement. And, of course, there was that bath scene with a gratuitous Hugh Jackman ass shot, which I'm sure many people will appreciate. And in fact, there, there's a lot of appreciative shots of Hugh Jackman in this film. At one point, he's approaching a bad guy going, ruff, ruff, and he just, like, you know, flex, he flex, he does a peck flex, <laughs> just one peck. Like, so, see how much I've worked out? Mm, I've worked out a lot. So, <laughs> I just found it, you know, pretty, uh, really hilarious. Let's, uh, let's see here, you know. Um, so, yeah, there was that. Uh, I, it's honestly about all the good things I can uh, really say about it. You know, aside from, uh, one other thing was the cinematography. is beautifully shot. I was actually eliciting memories of my own time in Japan when I was in, uh, when I passed through Tokyo. I mean, there's a scene shot briefly in Ueno Station. I, I remember that passing through there. You know, the Japanese countryside, beautifully shot. Um, there's even some, well, really anime flavored shots of this film such as uh, when Logan is, a, is approaching the Yoshida Castle, set up on the side of a mountain, and there is a uh, small town set in uh, snow. Because apparently this part of Japan ha is, has winter, and everywhere else it's like spring or summer. Um, Japan's, you know, pretty small. You'd have to... Uh, like, I'm just trying to remember from my own time there. Um, winter hits one spot. Yeah, it's everything gets cooler, but uh, you'd have to go really far north for the snow. Um, now for the downside. Uh, there felt like there was a certain level of exoticism here with, throughout this entire movie. Like I talked about how beautiful the cinematic shots were. There's a scene involving um, Mariko and Logan going and getting a room to hide out at, at a love hotel. And it's this Mission to Mars themed room. And yes, there are love hotels in Japan. I mean, there's even some in South Korea. I stayed at one because it was cheap, believe me. It was very 
cheap. Oh god, I probably shouldn't have talked about that. Um, moving on, I just, I can't quite put my finger on it. It, part of it, it actually didn't occur to me till later on in the film when I was re-watching this. Logan is an anguished white guy tortured by his past who goes to Japan and finds a measure of peace. This is really, quite frankly, an old racist trope. Uh, the other movie that really reminded me of was The Last Samurai by Tom Cruise. It just had that feeling about it. I honestly never bought into the deep relationship between Gene and Logan. from Because this takes place after X-Men 3, uh, The Last Stand, I think it's called. I'm not sure what that subtitle is. And throughout the movie, Logan's been weakened. His uh, healing uh, ability has been greatly suppressed, which kind of made it confusing sometimes because he pops his claws. And I mean, your claws are right here. You've got blood vessels here. You figure if you pop the claws right through here, psh, lots of blood. It, it, they actually show that in the comic after Magneto tore out his adamantium skeleton back in the late 90s, you know. And so I kind of figured it would be a lot more blood. In fact, it was actually pretty bloodless, this entire film. But uh, uh, but anyhow, so Logan's Weekend, he gets shot multiple times. He still heals, but at a greatly slower rate. And at the times where he's close to death, and even at some times where he's just being all mopey and everything, he dreams he's with Gene. And during the times when he's close to death, which is quite a few times here, she entices him to die and be with her. Which, I'm not sure if it's a manifestation of his guilt for having killed Jean. You know, the woman gone mad with power, which is another ugly trope that X3 delved into. But I just did not buy this deep relationship. And it also seems... Just rather troubling when stacked up against Logan's sudden, or not sudden, but growing infatuation with with Mariko, you know. Again, who was played very uh, wonderfully by the actress. And just, it just seemed as though the love that he had for Jean is pitted up against the love that he has uh, for for uh, for Mariko and it it felt kind of icky like really bad like not too well done. Um, another character that shows up is Viper, who is played by and let me see if I can get this name right. I right, here we go. Svetlana Ko uh, Svetlana Kojenkova. Yeah, I got it. And the thing is, Svet, uh, she plays a character named Viper. I actually had to look up a little bit about this character the night before. Viper is best known as Madame Hydra. And she is at best you know, a highly trained human who, like a couple of other characters in the Marvel Universe, Nick Fury and the Black Widow, has her aging process greatly suppressed. Meaning that she will live a long time. And she's also you know, an Olympic level athlete. Uh, she was also head of Hydra for a short time, and yes, she did have a run-in with Logan when he was fighting the Hand uh, alongside, I think it was Spider-Woman, years and years ago. But the thing is, it she honestly didn't seem necessary to this plot. Uh, it's like they just brought her in, and the end result is that we have basically two white people running around Japan beating up a whole bunch of Japanese people. And yeah, they're Yakuza and ninjas, but it's still bad. Which, I gotta admit, I've been to Japan. I remember one time there was an incident in which there was a shooting. One person was shot. They brought in the entire police force. Just Japan is one of those countries where there's almost next to no shooting deaths. They just... They've got a whole bunch of stuff lined up where it's almost impossible for you to get a gun. And so to see, you know, like these various Yakuza members, like, bang, bang, bang. I think I even saw someone go like this, which probably being MTV for, 
or bad directors in writing. Uh, and if that really happened, there, the, I think the police force would have a conniption. They would just come down on this like a bag of hammers. It, it also honestly reminded me of what one Taiwanese-American said of the movie Lucy, where she said if crime was really that rampant in Taiwan, uh, it, 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 because it isn't, if there's anything like even an accidental shooting incident, the, you know, the whole country just comes down on it. You know, it's not like crime-ridden, well, if the movies say it is, you know, crime-ridden America, like or Los Angeles or Chicago or New York, as we've been led to believe. So, the other thing I didn't I thought was really stupid was that Logan, uh, you know, he gets this like this robot on his heart and like, and he rips it out, and he goes into this town where this Shida Castle is, goes to save her, and his brilliant strategy is to run at the Yashida Castle while ninjas. Basically, shoot a crap ton of arrows at him. He becomes, you know, the mutant pin prick. Wait, mutant? No, mutant pin cushion. It is just like brilliant strategy. If there is one other good thing I do have to say, is that the characters of Mariko and Yukio, they actually have some agency. Now, multiple times, even though Mariko gets kidnapped time and time again. She fights back. She, you know, she doesn't like it. She actually knows some martial arts. She even says at one point that she competed nationally with weaponry. Um, and Yukio is just all kinds of badass. She, she's also a mutant who can see parts of the future. At one point she predicts Logan's death. But she is just, holy smokes, uh, I, I, I swear, she's just... Amazing in this film, she gets all just kicks all kinds of ass with a sword in hand to hand combat. Uh, she beats up and kills Viper all by herself, which I thought was you know really satisfying. And Mariko actually comes and takes takes agency over her life, becomes head of the Yashida Company. Spoilers and saves Logan. If there's one bit of nerdy thing I do have, and I'm honestly, I'm a casual Marvel fan at best, which is saying something considering, you know, the mass of knowledge I actually have stocked in this head, which is that at one point, they bring in the Silver Samurai, which is this gig which is this big, a uh, big suit of armor, which is uh, basically there as a life support system for Grandfather Yashida. Uh, Mariko's grandfather, and it's made entirely out of adamantium. The whole thing's made out of adamantium, and he has a sword which it heats up and it cuts through Logan's adamantium claws. If I can don my nude glasses here, adamantium is an indestructible metal. So even if it's struck by another sword made of adamantium that's heated up, it shouldn't really cut through it as easily as it does. And then Logan rips the suit apart with his bare hands. Logan is at best an above Olympic level strength, you know? He can't do that. He's not the Hulk. Uh, the Hulk couldn't tear apart adamantium. It just... It was... There's this whole feeling this movie this gave me, which, again, was still more entertaining than the Amazing Spider Emo, was that it really wasn't necessary. It's just more of 20th Century Fox keeping their hold on the X-Men franchise, mainly by branching it out with Wolverine, who's had... Uh, there's this, Wolverine X-Men Origins, which makes no sense, because at the end of Origins... Wolverine got shot in the head with an adamantium bullet and erased all his memories. I don't know how that works. So, he shouldn't even remember anything from Nagasaki. Which, again, this movie features the nuclear bombing of Nagasaki. I'm like, should you really be using this as a frame of reference? Yeah, J Logan did spend some time in Japan, but... Uh, I... 
it just has all, all kinds of uncomfortable feelings. Like, no, don't go there. Please don't. Oh, you went there. You went there. And of course, like all Marvel movies, this has an after credits scene. And it features Logan running into Magneto and Charles Xavier in the airport. I have no idea how this ties into, X -Men, into the next X-Men movie, Day of, Days of Future Past. If anyone can explain that to me, please do so. Because the last time I checked, the next three, which I never did see, but I did watch some clips, um, Charles Xavier got de super duper deatomized by you know, Jean Grey as the Phoenix. Like, like composite particles. He got turned into that. I don't know how he came back. And also, Yukio goes with Logan at, when he leaves Japan as his bodyguard, and at the airport she's nowhere to be seen. Is there any mention of Yukio in Days of Future Past? Like, what happened to her? Did they just write her off completely? Which is a shame because, again, Yukio was such a great character. I loved her. Her scenes were what really made this movie. Well, that end scene, Logan just get the absolute hell beat out of him. Like, he can't take he can't take shots like to, uh, from the gun. He can't take shots from a gun like he used to when his healing power is suppressed. <sighs> it's overall, it's not a bad film. I'm just getting really tired of Wolverine, and I really thought it was just not necessary to make it. If there's anything that gives me some hope about Days of Future Past, it's that they actually suppress more Wolverine and focus more on the X-Men. <sighs> well, that's about it. I'm Triple J. That's all I've got left to say. Take care.